You ready? <laughs> All right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. The liturgy of the palms is in your bulletin. Okay? And the words of the hymn we're going to sing eventually is right down the back here. And without an organ, this should be fun. <laughs> we're, just, we're just an acapella group from some college who's going to have some fun here. Oh, it only makes musicians get fancy, not us normal folks. So I'll we'll begin with the liturgy of the palms. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace is in the glory in the highest. Let us pray. Assist us mercifully with your help, O Lord God of our salvation, that we may enter with joy upon the contemplation of those mighty acts whereby you have given us life and immortality through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Luke. After telling a parable to the crowd to the crowd at Jericho, Jesus went on ahead going to Jerusalem. When he had come near Bethphage and Bethany, at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of the disciples, saying, Go into the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find there, tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Just say this, the Lord needs it. So those who were sent to Paddan and found it as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, Why are you untying the colt? He, they said, The Lord needs it. When they brought it to Jesus, and after throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. As he rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks on the road. As he was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would shout out. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Almighty God, for the acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. On this day he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was proclaimed as King of Kings by those who spread their garments and branches of palm along his way. Let these branches be for us signs of his victory, and grant that we who bear them in his name may have hail him as our king, and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Amen. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, in your tender love for the human race, you sent your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our nature and to suffer death upon the cross, giving us the examples of his great humility. Mercifully grant that we may walk in the way of his suffering and also share in his resurrection. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The first reading is from Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary world word with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backwards. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beer. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm today is Psalm 31. We'll read it responsibly by half verse. Have mercy on me, O Lord. For I am in trouble. My eyes are consumed with sorrow, and also my throat and my head. For my life is wasted with grief, and my years with sighing. I am very guilty because of affliction, and my bones are consumed. I have become a reproach to all my enemies, and even to my neighbors, a dismay to those of my acquaintance. I am forgotten like a dead man, out of mind. For I have heard the whispering of the crowd. Fear is all around. But as for me, I have trusted in you, O Lord. Many times are you, are many times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hands of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Make your face to shine upon your servants. And in your loving kindness. The second reading is from Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And when he found in human form, he humbled himself, and became obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, 
to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the path of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Now the festival of unleavened bread, which is called the Passover, was near. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to put Jesus to death, for they were afraid of the people. Then Satan entered into Judas, called Iscariot, who was one of the twelve. He went away and conferred with the chief priests and officers of the temple police about how he might betray Jesus to them. They were greatly pleased and agreed to give him money. So he consented and began to look for an opportunity to betray Jesus to them, when no crowd was present. Then came the day of unleavened bread, on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. So Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare the Passover meal for us that we may eat it. They asked him, Where do you want us to make preparations for it? He said to them, Listen, when you have entered the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him into the house he enters, and say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks you, Where is the guest room, where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, already furnished. Make, make preparations for us there. So they went and found everything as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When the hour came, Jesus took his place at the table and the apostles with him. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he did the same with the cup after supper, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. But see, the one who betrays me is with me, and his hand is on the table. For the Son of Man is going as it has been determined. But woe to the one who by whom he is betrayed. Then they began to ask one another, which one of them it could be who would do this. A dispute also arose among them, as to which one of them was to be regarded as the greatest. But he said to them, The kings of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those in authority over them are called benefactors. But not so with you. Rather, the greatest among you must become like the youngest, and a leader like one who serves. For who is greater, the one who is at the table, or the one who serves? Is it not the one at the table? But I am among you as one who serves. You are those who have stood by me in my trials, and I confer on you just as my Father has conferred on me a kingdom, so that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and you will sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. 
Simon, Simon, listen. Satan has demanded to sift all of you like wheat. But I have prayed for you that your own faith may not fail. And you, when once you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. And Simon Peter said to Jesus, Lord, I am ready to go with you to prison and to death. Jesus said, I tell you, Peter, the cock will not crow this day until you have denied three times that you know me. Jesus said to them, When I sent you out without a purse, a bag, or sandals, did you lack anything? They said, No, not a thing. He said to them, But now the one who has a purse must take it, and likewise the bag. And the one who has no sword must sell his cloak and buy one. For I tell you, this scripture must be fulfilled in me. And he was counted among the lost. And indeed, what is written about me is being fulfilled. They said, Lord, look, here are two swords. He replied, It is enough. He came out and went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. When he reached the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not come into the time of trial. Then he withdrew from them about a stone's throw, knelt down, and prayed, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. Then an angel from heaven appeared to him and gave him strength. In his anguish he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like, like great drops of blood falling down on the ground. When he got up from prayer, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping because of a grief. And he said to them, Why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. While he was still speaking, suddenly a crowd came, and the one called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He approached Jesus to kiss him. But Jesus said to him, Judas, is it with a kiss that you are betraying the Son of Man? When those who were around him saw what was coming, they asked, Lord, should we strike the sword? Then one of them struck the slave of the high priest and cut off his right ear. But Jesus said, No more of this. And he touched his ear and healed him. Then Jesus said to the chief priests, the officers of the temple police, and the elders who had come for him, Have you come out with swords and clubs as if I were a bandit? When I was with you day after day in the temple, you did not lay hands on me. But this is your hour and the power of darkness. Then they seized him and led him away, bringing him into the high priest's house. But Peter was following at a distance. When they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat among them. Then a servant girl, seeing him in the firelight, stared at him and said, This man also was with him. But he denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. A little later, someone else on seeing him said, You also are one of them. But Peter said, Man, I am not. Then about an hour later, still another kept insisting, Surely this man also was with him, for he is a Galilean. But Peter said, Man, I do not know what you are talking about. <coughs> At that moment, while he was still speaking, the cop, the Lord turned and looked at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said to him, Before the cock crows today, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. Now the men who were holding Jesus began to mock him and beat him. They also blindfolded him and kept asking him, Prophecy, who is it that struck you? They kept heaping many other insults on him. 
When a day came, the assembly of the elders of the people, both chief priests and scribes, gathered together, and they brought him to their council. They said, If you are the Messiah, tell us. Jesus replied, If I tell you, you will not believe. And if I question you, you will not answer. But from now on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the power of God. All of them asked, Are you then the Son of God? He said to them, You say I am. Then they said, What further testimony do we need? We have heard it ourselves from his own lips. Then the assembly rose as a body and brought Jesus before Pilate. They began to accuse him, saying, We found this man perverting our nation, forbidding us to pay taxes to the emperor, and saying that he himself is the Messiah, a king. Then Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered, You say so. Then Pilate said to the chief priests and the crowds, I find no basis for an accusation against this man. But they were insistent and said, he stirs up the people by teaching throughout all Judea from Galilee, where he began, even to this place. When Pilate heard this, he asked whether the man was a Galilean. And when he learned that he was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him off to Herod, who, himself, who was himself in Jerusalem at that time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was very glad, for he had been wanting to see him for a long time. Because he had heard about him and was hoping to see him perform some sign. He questioned him at some length, but Jesus gave him no answer. The chief priests and the scribes stood by, vehemently accusing him. Even Herod with his soldiers treated him with contempt and mocked him. Then he put an elegant robe on him and sent him back to Pilate. That same day, Herod and Pilate became friends with each other. Before this, they had been <laughs> Pilate then called together the chief priests, the leaders, and the people, and said to them, You brought me this man as one who was perverting the people, and here I have examined him in your presence, and have not found this man guilty of any of your charges against him. Neither Herod, for he sent him back to us. Indeed, he has done nothing to deserve death. I will therefore have him flogged and release him. Then they all shouted out together, Away with Away with us. Release us. This was a man who had been put in prison for an insurrection that had taken place in the city and for murder. Pilate, wanting to release Jesus, addressed them again, but they kept shouting, A third time he said to them, Why? What evil has he done? I have found in him no ground for the sentence of death. I will therefore have him flogged and then release him. But they kept urgently demanding with loud shouts that he should be crucified, and their voices prevailed. So Pilate gave his verdict that their demand should be granted. He released the man they asked for, the one who had been put in prison for insurrection and murder, and, they, and he handed Jesus over as a wish. <laughs> But as they led him away, they seized a man, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming from the country. And they laid the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A great number of people followed him, and among them were women who were beating their breasts and wailing for him. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For the days are surely coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren, and the wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if they do this when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Please stand. Two others, who were criminals, were led away to be put to death with him. When they came to the place that's called the Skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, 
Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to provide his clothing, and the people stood by watching. But the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself, if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, If you are king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. While the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself from us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? condemnation and we indeed have been condemned justly for you for we are greatly what we deserve for our deeds but this man has done nothing wrong then he said jesus remember me when you come into your kingdom jesus replied truly i tell you today you will be with me in paradise it was now about noon and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. While the sun's light failed and the curtain of the temple was torn in two, then Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. When the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God and said, Certainly this man was innocent. And when all the crowds who had gathered there for his spectacle saw what had taken place, they returned home beating their breasts. But all his acquaintances, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching these things. Now there was a good and righteous man named Joseph, who, though a member of the council, had not agreed to their plan and action. He came from the Jewish town of Arimathea, and he was waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then he took it down, wrapped it in a linen cloth, and laid it in a rock-hewn tomb where no one had ever been laid. As it was the day of preparation, and the Sabbath was beginning, the women who had come with him from Galilee followed, and they saw the tomb and how his body was laid. Then they returned and, and prepared spices and ointments. On the Sabbath they rested according to the hand. Amen. Just a sort of brief few thought meditation here. Having read the Passion, I think we've been sermonated enough in a way. Having heard this story and listening to what happened on this day. But I do have something here. I was reading, I read, uh, I get the writer's almanac in my email. It's Garrison Keeler. And he sends out, it's cute, because he gets a little poem in there for you to read. And then he has an on this day. And yesterday, on yesterday, the day, it was, there were two funerals for Martin Luther King yesterday. Way back when. And the president of Morehouse College, former president, Benjamin Mays, had this to say, Morehouse College was uh, Martin Luther King's alma mater. But he said this, Martin Luther faced the dogs, the police, jail, heavy criticism, and finally death. And he never carried a gun, not even a knife to defend himself. He had only his faith in a just God to rely on. 
Only his faith and a just God to be pride. In many ways, Jesus, as he proceeds through this week towards Good Friday, has that only to rely on his faith in God. That God would see him through this time, that God would see him through the resurrection. We live in a world filled with division and war right now. This is where empire strikes at the innocent. Where even civilians trying to escape the carnage are attacked while waiting in a train station. That is the evil of empire. Jesus comes to bring us the kingdom of God, a kingdom of love, not a kingdom of hate. This passion reminds us of God's kingdom and God's grace. We too have only our faith in God to rely on. And in many ways, that faith in God is enough to carry us forward. Amen. Turn to page 358. Let's confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light. True God and true God, be God and not name, a one being with the Father. Through him all things remain. For us and for our salvation, he came back from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became God and the Virgin Mary, and was a made man. For our sake, he was crucified and crucified. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. He said to God, and is seated at the right hand of the power. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will not have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped in glory. He has spoken through his prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are form six, found in your prayer book on page 392. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work. For this community, the nation, and the world, we pray for those in the military, Christopher Dawson, Justin Gary, Jamie Bryan, Justin R. Hudson, Russell Nall, Amber Mabry, Jared Farmer, and Bruce Carroll. For all who work for justice and freedom and peace. For all for the just and proper use of your creation. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble, we pray for the following. 
John Macy, Lexi Miles, Paula Swift, Jimmy Green, Bobby Sears, Joe Kowalski, Shirley Dalton, Emma Fisher, Jean Moss, Karen Wright, Regina Miller, Preston Bowden, Kelsey Malloy, Jan Graves, Timothy T. Walters, Bill Shaw, Donald Frazier, Dorothy Lomas, Naomi Smith, Wyatt T. Walters. For long-term and restored health, Barbara Mogul. For good health in older years, Molly Revels and Joan Nile. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For the most reverend Michael B. Curry, our presiding bishop, the right reverend Kevin S. Brown, our diocesan bishop, Bruce Lomas, our priest, Alex Emmert, senior warden, vestry group, Vida, Connie, Ralph, Lee, Alice, and the diocesan cycle of prayer, St. Luke's Church, Seymour, the Reverend Julian S. Ellis, pastor, and for all bishops and other ministers, for all who serve God in his church, for the special needs and concerns of this congregation. Hear us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the blessings of this day. I ask your thanksgivings for the birthday of Zachary Dupas, baptism of Kristen Schweiger and Alice Cooper, confirmation of Jimmy Schweiger and Vida Four, reaffirmation of Jim Schweiger and Teresa Walters. We will exalt you, O God, our King. We pray your name forever and ever. We pray for, for all those who have died, Mary Mills, that she may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. We put their trust in you. And we pray also for the forgiveness of our sins. Everyone together, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, and your compassion forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in the newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all of your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Ascribe to the Lord the honor to his name, bring offerings and come into his court.
joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, for our sins he was lifted high upon the cross, that he might draw the whole world to himself. And by his suffering and death, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who put their trust in him. Therefore we praise you, joining our voice of an angel, and that angels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we have fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is God, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in Him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask your Son, Jesus Christ. By him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us to stay our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who justice against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And I is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace of The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance. Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
body of Christ and bread. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The body of Christ, the bread of Paul's communion prayer is found on page 365 in the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of the body and blood. Send us now to the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and with gladness and sinless power, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and the Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you. And be with you always.
So thank you very, very, very much. And if you have not taken a moment to say hi to our visitor, we have Lorraine visiting us today. She is from New York. Um, she's just kind of moving around through a couple of churches. And so if you haven't taken a moment to say hi to Lorraine, please make sure you do. Welcome, Lorraine. Thank you very much for choosing St. Stephen's to spend your Palm Sunday with. Thank you. Did you announce the bakers? Hmm? You oh, no, no, yeah, one more thing. Um, and here's all. There's some bakers left over. 50 cents for any items, for things with cupcakes, two bucks, whatever you like to donate. There's a little bowl with some money already in it. Please take them. Please. <laughs> <laughs> Please take them. Um, we do have two whole items that are left in the fridge that we will be taking to Christ Church on Thursday. But everything else, Please eat them. They're very delicious. Take them love. No calories, like I said, to enter in the house of the Lord. So um, please eat them. Thank you. Today is the last day to sign up for the dinner for Christ Church Milford. Sign up sheets in the back, and I will be taking it with me when I go to send our number in. Anybody is welcome to Christ Church at 7 for our Monday Thursday service that Father and Lomas will be doing. Uh, we will also then be back here Good Friday. Father Loomis has agreed to do our service at 7, so we welcome everybody here for Good Friday. And then we'll be back here Sunday for Easter Sunday, and remember our start time is 1045. Even though Father Loomis was here, we're still going to start at 1045. And I think that's it, unless you have anything. Well, I just want to remind you that on Monday, Thursday, we go back to the common cup. Okay? That'll be it. Christ Church will be doing that. And I had a conversation with Dale Lemons last week about how we're going to do this and do it safely. You're going to have multiple ways, quite typical Episcopalians, we give you multiple choices here. <laughs> we're going to, next Sunday here, we're going to have a couple, we're going to come over and go off the rail. The lambs are going to have to go back to assisting me at the altar, as we all normally have done. What you're going to do is you're going to come up, you're going to get, of course, you get your wafer. Now you can consume your wafer, and then do this and refuse the cup, because that's going to come right by. Or you can take a sip from the cup, and I mean a sip. <laughs> Or you can tint your wafer in the cup. Again, an intention. It's not the whole hand. It's just the bit and the very tip of the wafer. Okay? We try to be as safe as possible. Just that they'll make the cup easy for you to do that at home. And hopefully the lens here will make the cup easy for you to do that. So you just can go. Remember, this is not a Dunkin' Donuts. This is <laughs> And so that's, those are the ways we're going to be doing it. So it's going to be it's going to take us some time to get reacquainted with the common cup. But things will be back to as what we consider normal as possible after Monday, Thursday. So be aware. And I hope maybe you do show up to Christ Church uh, for the service. You got me. So you know what you you know what's going to happen. No surprises there. It will be Facebook Live also if you cannot make it. You bring that? Yeah, I am. Oh, what a hero. <laughs> <laughs> there we are. Are we ready? Yeah. 